In this video, I'm going to introduce the Riemann zeta function and analyze it. Okay, so if you know the famous harmonic series, the sum of the reciprocals of the natural numbers diverges. And you may also know the Basel problem, the Basel problem, not n equals n equals 1. There we go which is the sum of the reciprocal of the squares of all the natural numbers is pi squared over 6. What if we instead generalize this to zeta of s is going to be the sum from n equals 1 until infinity of 1 over n to the s, right? I know what zeta is for two very special values. One, it doesn't converge. Two, it uh, gives you pi squared over six. And there's a formula for all even numbers that I'm not going to prove or write out. But this is the idea behind the zeta function. The zeta function just generalizes that idea. Zeta of s is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n to the negative s. I'm not going to write 1 over n to the s. That'd be a little difficult. Now, I'm going to show you a couple cool properties of prime numbers, and then I'm going to prove something very cool about the zeta function. And that's going to be the purpose of this video. Okay, so we know that 1 over 1 minus p to the negative s, right? I'm just going to add in that negative s for a very specific re reason is going to be equal to p or 1 plus p to the negative s to the power of 1 plus p to the negative s to the power of 2, right, and so on, right, by the formula that 1 over 1 minus x is 1 plus x plus x squared plus, right, and this is true for any prime and any s bigger than 1. Okay? This will converge for any s bigger than 1. If it's less than 1, I'm pretty sure it, it might converge. But we need it so that each of these values, so that uh, p to the negative s is between uh, 0 and 1. That's what we want. And that's true for s bigger than 0. Right? Because if 0 right here, if I bring, if I multiply both sides by p to the s, I get 0 less than p less than p to the s, right? And that's obviously true. So, oh no, 0 less than 1 less than 1. Okay, so we want s to be bigger than 1 for this to be guaranteed. Or s bigger than 0. Okay. Now, what, what, how can we use this fact? Let's think about the products of these for prime numbers, okay? I have a very specific theorem. The product from i equals 1 to n, 1 over 1 minus pi, p sub i, the ith prime, to the negative s, is simply going to be the sum of all numbers, of all natural numbers, r1 to rn, that are bigger than or equal to 0, of the product of the primes, times 3 to the r2 times, so 2 to the r1, all the way up until pn to the rn, that to the power of negative s. Okay? Cool. So, proof. I'll do a proof by induction. So I'll put induction. Okay, so n equals 1. That case. Well, let's write it out. 1 over 1 minus 2 to the negative s. By this formula, we have that's equal to 1 plus 2 to the negative s plus 2 to the negative 2s plus. And that's precisely what this is. 
that is equal to the sum for r bigger than or equal to 0. I'll call it r1 bigger than or equal to 0 of 2 to the r1 to the power of negative s. Right? That's precisely what this is. Okay, so we're going to go over here. Uh, the part where n implies n plus 1 part. Okay? Uh, so we assume n, that, that it's true for some n, and we prove it for n plus 1. Okay, so say we have the product from i equals 1 to n plus 1 of 1 over 1 minus p i to the negative s. And this is obviously going to be equal to the product from i equals 1 to n of 1 over 1 minus p i to the negative s. And we multiply that by 1 over 1 minus p n plus 1 to the negative s, right? That's how we define the product. So, but this, we know what that is. We know. We also know what this is. We know. So that's going to be good. Let's uh, expand this out. This right here, we assumed that this is going to be the sum of r1 to rn bigger than or equal to 0 of 2 to the r1 times all the way up until pn to the rn to the negative s. And we're multiplying that by that, which is the sum of r, and I'll call it n plus 1, r sub n plus 1, bigger than or equal to 0 of p to the r n plus 1 to the negative s, right? We had the same thing over here. This isn't making sense, just think about it for a little bit. This is then distributing the sum in, it's going to be the sum of r1 to rn bigger than or equal to 0. And then we add in this sum, because we're distributing it in. Right, we distribute this into the sum. So we have that. And we're multiplying that. We're going to have 2 to the r1 all the way up until p to the pn to the rn to the negative s. And we're multiplying that by p to the rn plus 1 to the negative s. Right? And then I could just move that p n plus 1 plus 1 to the rn plus 1 inside because they shared an exponent. And look at that. Right here, we can combine those two sums to be the sum from r1, rn plus 1, bigger than or equal to 0, of 2 to the r1 times all the way up until pn plus 1, r to the n plus 1, to the negative s, and we're done by induction. Okay, so this just gives you the primes. This just gives you the prime factorizations using a certain amount of primes, right? And we know that prime factorizations are unique. We can use this to our advantage. If we know that this is going to be the sum of all the prime, all, all of the numbers who have prime factorization, that is prime factorization from this group of the first n, the group of the first n primes, all the numbers who have prime factorizations that only use the first n primes. And we know that prime factorizations are unique. And right here, we're using a sum of numbers. So why don't we expand that out using the unique prime factorizations? So, so I'm just going to leave that theorem there. Now I'm going to continue on with uh, the zeta function. Okay, So zeta of s is also going to be the sum from n of all the prime factorizations, right? All of the prime factorizations, 2 to the negative s times 3 to the negative s, so on, right? Right? Because this is just going to be the prime uh, 2 to the negative r1, r1s, 
3 to the negative r, 2s, right? And so on. Or in other words, if I factor this out into its prime factors right here, and I bring it to the negative s power, this right here is a number. This right here is your power. And this gives you prime factorizations, right? So this gives you all the prime factorizations for such numbers. From that, we know that this is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sums from r1 to rn bigger than or equal to 0 of 2 to the r1 all the way up until pn to the rn to the negative s. But we know what this is. This is just by this theorem right here. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of the product from i equals 1 to n of 1 over 1 minus pi to the negative s. Or in other words, this is the product from i equals 1 until infinity of 1 over 1 minus pi to the negative s. The zeta function is the product of the reciprocals of 1 minus 1 over p to the power of your number. Whew.